People, let me, let me tell you something. We're gonna start the video off like this. I'm gonna get right to it. That wouldn't hurt. When, I'm, gonna, I'm off of them. When you tell people to get to work, they will sit in the truck right with you and just, knowing damn well that they need to get unlocked. They can sit there right with you, like, hey, just lollygag. But once again, it's a Lee Cuz Lawn Car. We out here, we got another one. Uh, I can't complain. I've just been ridiculously busy the only thing i've been doing is a couple shorts here and there putting his hat on looks like he got all right yeah only thing i've been doing is a couple shorts here and there so we got a we got a good one today little grass or whatever look good one but like i said it's been real busy i can't complain Videos come scarce when it's busy, people. I've been uh, I work. We worked seven days last week. We're gonna do six this week. We're gonna do six next week. The week after that, and then in June we should be back on our five-day schedule. You know, so we about to get to it, people. So let's go. <laughs>
right, people. This is... All right, look at her. I did a short on grouping, uh, what I call grouping tactics. Okay. When uh, and it's got to be <clears throat> it works best with a neighborhood that you like to do, but uh, when you when you group and uh, get the yards together, basically you start off with one property, maybe two, by each other. Then you simply all you got to do cut for a few times. Believe me, when we're out there cutting, these neighbors see you. Then they want to see, oh, how consistent is he? Okay, so they notice, oh, okay, he's always consistent. Oh, how was how his cleanup job? Because don't forget, a lot of people don't know this, whether they know or not. Your cleanup job got to look like you never made a mess. And a lot of people who are naturally messy, because I see this all the time while I'm out cutting, they forget to blow something, they don't blow it correctly, or they're out there with the inappropriate equipment to, to, to clean up the job. And um, where all this come from is, uh, make sure I'm, yeah, okay. And where all this come from is, uh, they want to see if you can clean up. They want to make sure, you got to be, a lot of these customers, before you get them, they can have a scumbag cutting the yard. And by loyalty, they will keep that person cutting the yard. <laughs> They want to make sure you're here to stay before they let someone go. They don't want you to come in and sit there and be like, okay, I'm going to cut the yard out of nowhere end of the season. By next season, they're asked out looking for somebody to cut the grass because they let you take over and you're not consistent enough to keep keep going. A lot of people uh, are like that. They get in something and they, they fall out of it. They, they get to the point to where... This ain't really what they want to do <clears throat> because I actually enjoy cutting grass. I'm kind of, uh, I'm kind of, kind of got like a little bit of OCD in me. A little bit of OCD, not a lot. That works out good because if you have a lot of OCD in you and you're trying to cut yards, you will end up spending on a property that should take you 30 or 45 minutes. That person who has true OCD, they're going to be in that. They're going to be at that property for a good couple of hours. Problems, maybe an hour and a half, shortest, but that's it. That's an issue. So, but like I say, you got to be clean. You got your cleanliness with uh, blowing off the property, making sure you don't get anything on the house, making sure. Corey, matter of fact, check that mulch. Make sure I didn't get anything in it because uh, I thought I was far enough, but I noticed it was still touching, at least getting to the bricks. Yeah, okay. All right. I knew it, I knew I was close to the pavers when it was blowing over there. But yeah, like I said, you want to make sure you, you don't get any type of grass in the landscape. And if you do get in, make sure you blow it out. And if you got a heavy blower, a big blower, feather the trigger. A lot of people don't know what that is, but yeah, just feather the trigger just to, just to get enough to get the grass out of there without blowing all the mulch into the yard. But like I said, these customers, they sit back and watch everything. So when you do go end up deciding to go put, put a flower on there or a door hanger, when you do decide to put a flower or a door hanger on the door, they already know who you are. They've been waiting. If you're good, they've been waiting on you to knock on the door. Will still pass your uh, information off to uh, to uh, somebody that they know, and they'll be like, "This person's good. I watch them. This and that. This and that. It all works out in your favor. Just because you don't get the yards that you try to get, don't mean they're not coming for you. Sometimes, like a lot of my flyers, I get calls from people that, that I handed out cards and flyers to last year. A lot of them finished off with the person that they had for the year. They called me uh, as soon as they were ready to get the yard cut. So basically, or they just walked over and talked to me, and boom, they're on the schedule. That's how I get mo a lot of my uh, yards that I have that are right by each other. I either put a door hanger or a flyer on the door, or they done pull it up on me. They come out the woodworks. They will walk across. 
Yeah, okay. Yeah, I, I, I just thought about some of the customer people. I got so much going on in my mind. I forgot. I, I was sitting there making sure that I sent the email. Okay, yeah, I sent it. Okay. They will walk across yards. They will drive up on you. They'll come out the woodworks, like I said. But that's a good thing, and that's how I get most of my people. It's either if I see the neighbor and they're out, I'll talk to them and be like, I cut this, and I give them pricing. And then, uh, like that uh, that corner lot, that massive corner lot, I just got him to go uh, weekly on that thing for the simple fact is every two weeks the grass is so high, I said, there's no reason for you to be taking it. This is how you hit them with it. If every two weeks, I said, there's no reason for your yard to look this overgrown by after week one. So you're sitting there with it looking good at week one. And then by the time the second week come around, your yard need cut again, but it's looking like you never even dealt with it. So basically I say this yard need a weekly put, and then I take $5 off. Take five dollars off the price, but that's weekly. I'm getting money, baby. That's how the, the whole thing goes. I give a small discount, small to me. And sometimes I might take ten off. It depends on how easy the yard is. But that that yard was a five dollar off yard for some fact. Like this that yard take takes us. Uh, we cut two yards, and we did it within an hour. We did it within an hour and fifteen minutes because we did the massive corner lot and then we did another yard to where we had to push motor back. So that takes, it took about an hour and 15 minutes, but like I said, as long as I'm uh, I'm making money, the goal, my goal is two cuts an hour. So sometime travel time will come in and mess that up, but the good thing about it is when you have those easy yards and you knock off them three within an hour or or if you really got it going on, because like on some of my stuff, I can uh, hit them in 15, 20 minutes. So it depends on what I'm doing. It depends on uh, through the contract. I have kind of a contract uh, that I deal with to where all we do is come through and cut and trim. They don't want you edging. They're not paying for none of that. Thing. They tell you that. We want you to cut and trim it. Here's the price. And it's still a real, a real good price for what it is. So the deal is... We can do three, four of them in an hour, easy. So, uh, once you get caught up on that, I have goals. I go back, I look at all my times because I'm timed on every yard when I clock into that property. And uh, I make sure that I'm going through my times and I'll be, I might, after a month or, or a month and a half or two, I start looking at the averages. And I gotta make sure that I'm averaging my, a good, decent time to make my productivity, make me get where I need to be. Cause I have, like I said, I got a lot going on. I got a lot I want, and you know, business is business. The, the goal is to make money and grow. If you don't want to grow, that's fine. You want to be stay solo, shit. I don't, I don't blame you. Being a solo operator, is, uh, it can be hard at times because it's just you, especially when when it's raining left and right. Catching up is whoo. But. Like I said, becoming a solo, being a solo operator has its perks and it has its uh, declines. Cause like last year, I tell you people, I turned down probably about 70 yards last year when I was solo. Before I before I started getting consistent help, because I was already maxed out. The deal is, I have a, I don't know, I have like 20 or 25 weekly properties that I cut every week. So. When you add that on, and then you add all these bad weeklies in, and like I said, I'm this year I'm not turning down nothing. I don't care if we have a backlog. I will put the people that I know that don't care for getting cut every two weeks and like to always can we uh we want to push off a week. I put them on the three. I come. I hit them every three weeks. I don't care if it's a backlog, because guess what? If we ever go to the point to where the grass, the, it stops raining, which it does sometimes. It did it to us last year, and brown, gra the grass go brown. Guess what? When those other customers fall off, I'm still sitting on the plethora. Put it that way. The contracts still go. That's the that, and that's the only good thing that I like about contracts. The contract yards, they still got to be cut. They don't, they don't care if they're growing or not. Every two weeks or every week, however it's written up, that's what you're doing. But like I said, but what's going on? I'm, I'm, I'm tired to babble your head off, heads off. Let's go on and see the finished product.
All right, people, that's how we got it. Are you not ready to close the gate up? Yeah. Why are you, you moving all quick? That gate ain't that easy, is it? Uh, that gate ain't that easy, is it? Uh, yeah, right. All right, people, we're in the front yard because he's already closed the gate up, and I'm not messing with that gate once it's closed. So, yo, this is the finished product. Got the edge in together. House looks nice. Everything blowing off. Like I said, I already talked your head off. And, uh, it's time to go to the next one, people. Once again, it's Elite Cuts Lawn Care. Corey, boy, you got anything you want to say? You know you ain't got nothing to say. Corey, you got anything you want to say? Camera looking at you. <laughs> Not today. Like we knew it. Once again, it's Elite Cuts Lawn Care. We out. Remember, grouping is, that's how you get them. You just attack the people, people. But all you got to do is come to them, talk to them, and just round them up. Especially with the houses where you know they're not getting, they not getting service right. So, once again, it's Elite Cuts Lawn Care. We out.